Why does it sound like penis? <laughs> Welcome to this week's video. So I want to be honest with you guys. This is the last glass of wine from the bottle that I opened. And during that time of drinking the bottle of wine, I thought it would be a good idea to make a YouTube video revealing all of the movies that I have watched in quarantine because that's what we're all doing. We're just watching a bunch of movies and now once we're out of quarantine, we all need to know what we all watched and that way we can know what's good and what's bad and then we can watch them because they're all on all the streaming things. We don't wanna waste our time watching crappy stuff so we're gonna watch good stuff because I'm gonna let you know what was good and what wasn't good from the movies I watched. I hope you followed that because I'm not sure I did. Anyways, so we've got a long list of movies that I have watched over the however long we have been in quarantine because staying safe is important. And so we're gonna go through them. Some of them are really old movies that I have never seen but watched now. Some of them are movies that I just rewatched from like my childhood. And then some of them are just like series movies that I love. So I'm just like, you know, gonna let you know if they're good or not because if you've watched the series then you need to know if you need to continue the series anyways i have all of my notes written on my handy dandy phone and so we will start with red eye red eye was a movie from i don't know i guess when i was in high school maybe junior high and it's about a young girl who is a hotel manager who has to fly home from I don't know what and then some hijacker person comes and is like, I would take your dad down if you don't help us because we want to take down someone that's going to come to your hotel. Basically, from what I understand from the entire movie and what you're going to take from this entire movie is it's a good movie. It's very suspenseful. It's not scary. It's just like, is what it is. But if you are ever encountered by a creepy guy like the one in the movie cue photo of creepy guy from red eye then you need to learn some self-defense because rachel mcadams in that movie just straight up took a pen and just Wah! so i would give that movie a six out of ten so on to the next movie and I would like to say that this is probably the most unpopular opinion of like, I don't know, all children in the entire world. Frozen 2 was trash. There was no need for Disney to make a Frozen 2. It was not good. It had crappy music. It was teaching children lies. And by lies, I mean, there is a whole song where Olaf tells everyone in the entire world that, let me just check my phone to make sure that I get this grammatically correct because it really made me upset. When you're older, absolutely everything makes sense. Does it though? For instance, Corona. Does that make sense to anybody? No. So, Disney teaching children lies. They are giving them unrealistic expectations of adulthood and adulting, and I'm just very upset by that entire movie. Anyways, do not recommend it. If you haven't seen it, don't watch it. Stick to Frozen 1. Disney really needs to know when to stop. They have a too much gene in them, and they need to stop. Stop at Disney Princess 1 movies. There's no need for sequels. Let's start the movement. Keep princess movies to one. There really wasn't ever a really good like sequel princess movie, honestly. Do you think there was? Let me know down in the comments because I'm not sure. Moving on to movie number three. First, let me take a second. Movie number three is Armageddon. 
If you haven't seen Armageddon, no, it is a lot like Click, the movie with Adam Sandler, where you think it's just gonna be a funny, go free, happy movie, and then at the end they hit you in your gut and they make you really upset and really sad, and I can't handle it. Also, side note, Liv Tyler is in that movie and she gets it on multiple times while her dad is singing. What? I don't wanna close my eyes. I don't wanna fall asleep cause I miss you, babe. And I don't wanna miss a thing. So just imagine her with some guy in a field, like just an open field, like getting it on to that music. How awkward would that be? Like I know it didn't actually like play out that way and the music people overlaid it, but still weird. So if you want to watch it, highly recommend it. Great movie, just was really sad in the end. And next movie, because I wanted to see how this pandemic would play out, I watched both Contagion and Outbreak, both of them. Outbreak is from like, I don't know, the 90s. And so it's super old and like, clearly doesn't make any sense. It, it's not really realistic. I mean, they basically find a cure for it in all of like five minutes of the movie and then like everything's fine. So I just ruined the movie for you, sorry. But that one's like, I don't know, 30 years old. So hopefully you would have watched it by now. Contagion, that one's a bit newer, a bit more new, newer. That one came out more recently, most recently. Anyway, Contagion, I believe it has Mark Wahlberg in it. And basically, same thing. Outbreak happens, it actually starts in China, much like coronavirus. And then gets brought here, and then people die, and then, you know, like it just continues. If you want a really realistic depiction of what pandemics can look like, watch Contagion. But here's my like asterisk, like, you need to be in a good mood, in a good place, because if you aren't, then you're just kind of gonna think that we're in this like revolving cycle that's never gonna end, but eventually this is all gonna come to an end and we're all gonna be good. So the next movie I would like to talk about that I watched recently, actually rewatched because I used to watch this movie a lot as a child, is Center Stage. Oh my God. Let me just tell you, I watched that movie as like an elementary school kid. I remember being at a slumber party watching that with like all the girls and feeling so super cool because we were watching this movie. I think it's PG-13, I'm pretty sure it's PG-13 because of like sexual relations within it. What I want you to know is that if you have children right now that are in elementary school, do not let them watch that movie. It is extremely sexual and also like, shows you what ballerinas go through. So I don't know, like, okay, so I just like jumped into this movie. So it's about a girl that tries to go into a company, like a ballerina dance company, and all of the things that she has to do in order to like be successful in the company and whatnot. Anyways, as you can imagine, like they're doing the point ballet and so their feet are just horrendous and like they're trying to stay like skinny, skinny thin. So people are having like eating disorders and whatnot. And of course there's like sexual tensions with the straight guys in the academy because you know, why not? If you need to have love and relationships in a movie, go for it. So if you really like ballet and dancing and all those sorts of things, you will really like center stage. The next movie I would like to review is Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. I watched this movie in, I don't know, like early 2000s maybe. That movie actually had really good CGI for a decom movie, right? Like they spent some money. But the weirdest thing that I took from that movie was that at the beginning, there was like an intro portion where like Xenon's running through the whole spaceship up in the world. I should probably backtrack. You don't know what Xenon is potentially. I mean, I think everyone in the world should know what Xenon is, but I know what Xenon is, but I don't think you know what Xenon is. But Xenon is a Disney Channel original movie that is about 
a girl who lives in a space station up in the space or space, not the space, it's just space. And basically they just live up there. They do lots of different experiments and things. I don't know, whatever. So that's where like the CGI and all that stuff comes into play. But there's the intro scene where basically she is running through the space station, like trying to get to class because they still have class in space. And she gets there and it's like a history teacher or something. And he's teaching whatever, I'm assuming history, maybe politics, I don't know. But basically he's talking about the president of the United States. And he says that the president is Chelsea Clinton. All right, please tell me if you were like, I don't know, 11 years old watching this show, movie, whatever you wanna call it, that you would know who Chelsea Clinton is because I didn't. I only knew it because I rewatched it now as like a 27 year old adult. The last thing I would like to say about this movie is Cetus Lapidus. The last movie that I would like to discuss, which I really don't have much to say about them, honestly. I've watched all of the Transformers movies and my favorite character of all of the Transformers is Bumblebee. I love Bumblebee. He is just so funny and so great and the best. And so when I heard that they had created a whole Transformer movie about Bumblebee, I was so excited. But you know what? Movie let me down. It was good, it was fine. Like if you want a mindless action movie, go for it. But there was like no story to it whatsoever. The only thing that I got from that movie is that Transformers age. Like people, they actually like grow and they get older and they look more mature and stuff because like that movie, it was a teenage bumblebee. So that was different in the fact that like, who would have thought that Transformers weren't just like built? For that movie, I would give like, I don't know, a five. Yeah, I'd say a five. I would also like to say, of course, at the end of this video, that I go into movies with really low expectations. So if I am remotely entertained by the movie, it has done its job. And all of these movies did their job. I'm just being a critic, but I am one critic. There's also like Rotten Tomatoes and all the other like movie judging people. So if you really want to get a professional's opinion on the movies, you should listen to me, of course. So let me know down in the comments what movie you would like for me to watch and let you know what I think about it before you watch it because clearly I should watch it before you watch it so that way you know if you are wasting your time or not, you know? So if you enjoyed this movie, it's not a movie, it's a YouTube video. So if you enjoyed this YouTube video, click that like button down below as well as click that subscribe button down below. I think they're like right next to each other if I remember correctly. And I will see you all next time. Bye!